Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you also get aggravated when you read the last sentence of a, of a reading like this and it says, and he only spoke in parables and then he told them in private what, the, what it all meant, which helps us not at all 2,000 years later, right? Okay, wake up, folks. Yeah, yeah, that was... Wouldn't you like to know what, how Jesus really meant these? Okay, well, all right. Let's talk gardening, because that's sort of what these stories are about a little bit. Who likes to garden here? I know there's a number of gardeners in our midst. Jack, yeah, I know. There's, uh, good, good, good. Well, then you'll understand right where I'm coming from here. I've learned a lot about gardening in the last couple years, um, especially, like, I grew up around gardening. My grandfather was a huge gardener. We had a monstrous garden in our backyard, and he would come up every day and be weeding and rototilling and hoeing and all this business. But I was little, so I didn't pay too much attention. But the last couple years, as we have had a garden here at House of Prayer, I've come to have a new appreciation for the depth of farming. Um, Mike started this garden out here, and then Terry sort of jumped in also, and we've had some other community people. Um, and it is an intense labor sort of deal. Like last fall, I heard Terry talking about getting soil samples, and then putting some sort of nutrient down on the ground so that it'd be extra ready to, to be you know, alive this year. And then this year, we were out rototilling, and he was out, and Mike was out rototilling, and, and then putting more nutrient down in there. We got a big bunch of manure and put that down all through there, and we hadn't even planted anything yet. And then we planted stuff, and it's not like you just plant it and walk away, and it's all cool. I mean, there's, there's work all the time. The planting was exhaustive work. Um, then there's the tilling and the, the keeping the weeds out and, and making sure that they're not getting eaten by bugs or other sorts of bad stuff happening. And let's not even talk about watering, right? We need rain barrels so we can get some water out there to the plants, especially the ones closest to the building. For those of you who have gardened, you know this is, this is intense stuff. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, I grow hops at my house. I planted them five years ago, and now they just do their thing. Gardening is not like that, is it? No, no. My hops are beautiful and lush. I did nothing this year, except for put some strings down from the roof so they could climb the strings. God does not know anything about gardening, or maybe Jesus doesn't know anything about gardening, because in Jesus' world, this is how gardening works. You scatter some seed on the ground. Yeah, just throw some seeds on the ground, right? And then you sleep. This is my kind of gardening here. Just <laughs> scatter some seed on the ground, and then you sleep. And you rise, night and day, and the seed just sprouts and grows. Doesn't know how. The earth produces of itself, first the, the stalk, and then the head, then the full grain in the head. And when the grain's ripe, then it's time for the harvest. What is Terry doing? Mike, what do you do spending so much time out there? You other gardeners, do you, I mean, that's how you do it apparently. That's how Jesus said, right? I love these Jesus parables because at face value, that's not really the point, right? I mean, um, so it's cool, Mr. Lee and Ms. Michelle, the, the approach they're taking is that these little seeds grow up to be this great big plant, especially the mustard seed. And that's certainly the case here. It's certainly the case in our garden out there. Um, but I wonder if there's another way um, of, of reading this story. So this week, um, just happened to be, I happened to be listening to a lot of Bob Marley. That's why I had Joe play the Bob Marley there. And that song in particular, are you familiar, anyone familiar with Bob Marley? Um, Three Little Birds, that song, Don't Worry About a Thing, because everything's going to be all right. Um, what if you think about this parable in light of that song? What if... What if we look at this parable as a story about worrying about stuff? And not as correct gardening process, but rather as a story about letting go. Because that's sort of what the farmer, the gardener does in this story, right? You scatter the seeds, and then really, you trust God with everything else. There's no hoeing and weeding and, and, and watering, even though we know that needs to happen with gardening, with, at least if you want to be successful. But in this story, the way Jesus tells it, he sows the seed, which is very metaphorical, right? And then lets God do the rest. Don't we do best when we're like that also? 
And this isn't just a one-story sort of theme for Jesus. Jesus loves this theme of not worrying about stuff. In another place, he talks about the birds of the air or the lilies of the field and how they just do their thing and they thrive, right? My dog does not worry about where her meal will come from later in the day. She just goes to her bowl and barks and it just shows up for her. But the birds out there, they're not worrying about anything. I mean, it's it's a prevalent, great theme for Jesus. And man, we have so much stuff in our world we worry about, don't we? Friends, what are you worrying about right now? I'm willing to bet you all have some heavy stuff on your hearts today, right? Jobs, family, kids, parents, brothers and sisters, houses, mowing the grass, making sure your garden's actually growing. Did I water it enough? Um, From the light stuff like gardening to the serious stuff like caring for aging parents or family members that are really sick. I mean, there is a lot of reason for us to have some crazy worry and crazy anxiety in our life. And yet, at the same time, don't we know that when we let that stuff go, we are healthier for it? And that holding on to that worry and anxiety doesn't really help us out? I mean, these words of Jesus, we know they're true. Um, And when when we let go... It is so good for us. We are better people for ourselves and for the sake of those around us, right? And so I could say amen right there and just leave the sermon at that. But my life experience makes this topic a little more complex than just, well, I'm just going to let it go. Have you thought that to yourself? Like, I'm just going to let go of the stress. And do you find that it just doesn't go away? So I'm a person that struggles with Um, the mental illness side of anxiety and depression and those sorts of things. And this has just made a huge, like, jump in the media in the last week or two because of Anthony Bourdain and suicides. uh, This has been a major conversation piece. And it hits home for me, and it hits home for us because I'm not the only one that has struggled with these kinds of things. Uh, A lot of you know my story a couple years ago. I really sort of just became overwhelmed with death and, like, my own death and death of my family and anxiety And there is no reading Bible stories and wishing it away. In fact, I remember walking one day um, over to Sheffield Cafe, I think, to breakfast with someone. And I remember just being so overwhelmed with the anxiety and the worry inside of me. And I recalled the story of the lilies of the air. And I saw birds flying around. I'm like, I want to be like the birds. Um, And I could not make it go away. There is no amount of wishful thinking or hoping or someone telling me how absurd my thinking was to just make it go away. And that is a real thing in our world. And I don't know if any of you have struggled with it from time to time, but I know statistics in our world, and the statistics would definitely say that the odds are some of us in this room have been there. And so what I think God would say and what God has given to us in this world are doctors and therapists and counselors that are there to speak truth to us and care for us when we go through these moments. And so, brothers and sisters, I don't know if you are in these places in life now, or if you have been and have come through them, or if you know people that are, but continue to tell them that God loves them, that God loves you, and there are systems and people in place to care for us. And I think those are from God. And we do our best when we remind each other that they are loved and there are ways in which they can get treated and cared for. Amen.